Hi guys and gals, welcome back to theCUBE's day two coverage of Fred Strike Falcon 23 live from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Lisa Martin and Dave Vellante. We're going to be talking with Dell and Intel next about their partnership with CrowdStrike. We're going to be breaking down hardware assistive security, what it means, why it's so important. Please welcome our two guests. JRB is here, Director of Product Security, Manageability and Serviceability at the Client Solutions Group at Dell. Technologies and Rick Eshavaria, VP Security at Center of Excellence at Intel. It's great to have both of you on the program. It's great to be here with you. Share with us, JRB, we're going to start with you and then Rick will go to you. Talk about the three way partnership Dell, Intel, CrowdStrike. When was it founded? What's going on there? What's exciting? Absolutely. Look, and I always say that you know, cybersecurity is a team sport. Uh, as the attackers have gotten more and more sophisticated, uh, the, the industry has recognized that it's not uh, one company, one product, one platform that just solves everything. Uh, it's the coming together of the best silicon out there, Intel, the best hardware service provi hardware provider, the most secure PC in the industry, Dell, the best security company out there, CrowdStrike, bringing us together and see what we can do and how we can collaborate on areas where we each specialize in and bringing that together and really reducing and shrinking the attack surface that's what excites us the most. Uh, we started our partnership with CrowdStrike uh, earlier this year. Uh, though we, we, we have integrations into some of their solutions, but we also have their products sold through Dell Channel. Uh, you can buy a Dell PC and, and buy a CrowdStrike license with that. And that's also pretty exciting for us. Definitely. Rick, talk a little bit about the CrowdStrike partnership with Intel. It goes back farther, I understand, yes? Yes, it goes back at least five years. And it got started uh, out of the, the idea of delivering defense in depth, which is a big philosophy and what brings us together. And um, we've always been a big believer in platforms and partnering with platform companies, and that's what CrowdStrike really is. And years ago we thought there are, you know, if you think about where the silicon sits within a compute stack, it is the foundation. It is the foundation of the computing stack. How can the silicon play a more active role in helping the defenders deliver the right security outcomes. And so we had been working together on this whole concept of there's a lot that the CPU and the silicon sees above the stack. Can we start harnessing that intelligence to again do a better job of identifying threats as quickly as possible that are not visible through any other means? So there's uh, the collaboration goes deep and wide in a number of different capabilities. We have been working with Dell for, for a long time, but specifically in the manageability and security space for over 16 years uh, through a lot of our collaborations with our vPro platform. And so over the last year, the CrowdStrike collaboration, the Dell collaboration, all those converge as JRB described. You know, Rick, um, I, I I asked Pat Gelsinger on theCUBE one time, is security a do-over? And he said yes, was his answer, definitively. And you know, Pat, so articulate. And in one of the latter uh, VMware, or VM worlds in his tenure, he made the statement, my mission is to fix security. Now little did I know he was going to do that at Intel. <laughs> <laughs> so I wonder if you could talk about the evolution of what's happening at the silicon level, what's changed, Maybe even some of the threats and that you've learned over the years, the exposures, you know, whether it's memory leaks or the hypervisor being able to get to certain you know, silicon components, and how Intel has evolved, and then we can move up the stack. Yes, yeah. okay. I'll try to give you a short answer, because that is a question that we can speak to forever, yeah. but you know, over, dec over the decades that we've been in the industry, and even dating to when Pat was originally at yeah. Intel, we have been looking at trying to protect every little bit of surface area of attack on the platform. And you know, in the early days, it was about the PC and protecting the operating system. And then we started looking at how do you protect both below and above. Things that you wouldn't think about, like page tables, okay, and protecting page tables. I mean, all those things were part of the early evolution of security was, again, there's a surface area, how can it be attacked? Can you go protect it? Fast forward to where we are today with a much more broader portfolio of technologies. The client, the edge, the cloud, they all represent different challenges for us. So the way we approach security at the silicon level is first, you have to deliver uh, 
very strong foundation through a lot of the work we do with security development practices and product assurance, right? And as you move up the stack, you start identifying what are some of those newer threats that we can solve with silicon. So I'll give you three examples and then we'll you know, move on. But if you look at Endpoint, with this collaboration with Dell and CrowdStrike, a large number of attacks today are fileless attacks, yep. okay? They really require visibility in memory in a persistent way. So we developed a technology that allows CrowdStrike to have visibility into memory. That is very, that's a very expensive process. You heard George yesterday talking about complaining about performance, but what if we offloaded that visibility from memory to the integrated GPU that's already in the PC? That allows you to look at memory four to seven times more without having that impact in performance. So we kind of thread the needle there with performance and security. So that's one example of the role that Silicon is playing, okay? Now, take that telemetry and that insight that CrowdStrike has at the silicon level, and now make it part of what they do with, at the edge with Zscaler and the trust exchange. Well now that silicon and that posture becomes visible as they're doing conditional access. And then if you go look at the cloud, where people are concerned over data, privacy, managing access to data, that's where our trusted execution environments in silicon, technologies like SGX and TDX come into play. So, that's just an example of how we've evolved and sort of three distinct areas where we're increasing our focus. It's endpoint security, it's zero trust, and it's confidential computing, and the Dell collaboration across all of them is just a natural for us. Okay, now JR, describe where you guys come in in the value chain and, and take us up the stack, and maybe even out to the supply chain as well, where I know you guys Absolutely, and you said it right. I mean, if I take a step back, and as Rick alluded to this, cybersecurity has evolved so much, that the, it's like a cat and mouse game. So the adversaries are constantly finding new attack vectors, while the cybersecurity community is trying to keep closing the gaps. And it's like a constant catch-up game. Uh, the way we think about that is, uh, if you look at, as, as Rick alluded to that, you, know, you have different levels of stack. Up until very recently, the below the operating system and supply chain were largely unaddressed uh, part of the ecosystem of, of security that attackers were just beginning to exploit. And it's always about staying ahead of the attackers and not constantly playing catch up. As it is, it is it's, it's pretty dire, right? Given all of that, the way we think about that is we take all of the technology that Intel has to offer, uh, build it into our ecosystem, then we look at what else we can do. Uh, Dell creates its own BIOS, we validate and publish all of our firmware. We have developed capabilities where we can uh, verify the BIOS integrity of a device, we can uh, verify the integrity of the Intel management engine firmware, uh, we can also look at supply chain. I always say that the security of a PC begins even before it's assembled. We go even backwards in terms of the process from the time we identify vendors, procure components, the controls we put in place in our fulfillment centers, implementing least privilege and all those things, and what we call broadly as secure design lifecycle that we implement and then we assemble the device and when we ship it to the device, we now have capabilities where customers can, through certificates, attest and make sure that it, what they ordered, the key components, is exactly what they got. Mm -hmm. Through an offer we have called secured component verification. Now all of that is, some people will look at, okay, you got more widgets. Yes, they are widgets, but more than widgets, for me, they are sources of telemetry into areas that you never had visibility to before. Now that you have visibility to that part of the, the telemetry, you can take the telemetry and pipe it into platforms like Falcon. Now, the SOC analysts and others have much, en much enriched data set to work with and visibility into areas, which is essential. You cannot have zero trust without a hardened and observable endpoint. These are all defenses and layers that we mm -hmm. build in that gives them that visibility. Yeah. We were having an interesting discussion yesterday with Adam Myers uh, of CrowdStrike and you know, it used to be we talked all, a lot about dwell time. You know, people would mm -hmm. be even the Solar Winds hack. Yeah. They were inside for whatever 300 days, and so the industry was focused on compressing that time, which yeah. I'm sure yeah. it's in part still is. But so much emphasis here has been on breakout time. Yeah. So to Adam's point was dwell time doesn't even matter anymore. If they're in and out, and they've taken all your data and they've encrypted, it doesn't matter how long they've they've been there. Uh, you got to stop the breach. And that seems to be sort of the new philosophy. I mean, not new for CrowdStrike, but what I'm hearing is you guys sort of adhere 
to that philosophy mm -hmm. as well. I wonder if you could add some color to that sort of premise. Yeah, I would say that, uh, you know, yeah, you're right. You know, dwell time was also getting reduced, right? Because they were dwelling in the, uh, in the accounts for, a, uh, for less time than, let's say, five years ago. Right. And now we're calling it breakout time. I think it's right now 79 minutes versus yeah. 118 minutes five years mm -hmm. ago. I even heard today that it's seven minutes is that the, was the fastest, fastest one that, that they've yes. seen, right? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I think it's going to be, which is why, I think uh, this, there's this conundrum in cybersecurity for a long time. Uh, is it prevention or is it detection and response? Some companies took a prevention first approach. Some said no matter what you do, you're going to get somebody in, detect and respond. I think they're two essential sides of the coin. Many of the solutions that we have partnered with Intel and built into are things that are sort of in the prevention side a little bit because if you can have these defenses built in, one of the things we have is root of trust, which is the very first time you press mm -hmm. the boot button, the very first process that tells the machine to boot has to be first verified that it's clean. And then the subsequent activities all verify the previous activity to make sure they're clean. So it's like a chain of events that we have instituted. And if that is something wrong there, the machine shouldn't boot. So building uh, defenses like that also helps uh, reduce the amount of things that the SOC analyst will have to deal with, right? So that you re reduce the blast radius, uh, you reduce the chances of these kind of things happening. So they're only looking at then what more sophisticated things that adversaries are up to and how to prevent that or detect and respond to that. Yeah, yeah. I totally align with that. I think in terms of, of sort of reducing that, that time to understand the, the posture and the situation you're dealing with, it's a big part of our motivation. We want to give the defenders um, as much context as we can give them as quickly as possible on the state of these devices and the state of this platform, right? So they can apply the right controls. We, we like to call it the three C's, capabilities on the platform to deliver the right uh, context to apply the right controls as quickly as you can get there. And that's really what the collaboration is. I do want to point out, as JRE was describing the work that Dell has done, the importance of understanding that the surface area of attack and where attacks are happening continues to expand. And the work that Dell has done on BIOS and firmware protections, really important. You would be surprised, and maybe JRV can comment on this, how, how many attacks at the firmware level we're starting to see more and more happen, right? Yeah, we did a study a couple of years ago and we found that about 44% of the organizations have seen some kind of a cyber incident, either a breach or an attempt. Um, leveraging something around a hardware level vulnerability. That they know yeah. about. Yeah, that, <laughs> that they, they know, know about, about. yes. Right? <laughs> this number's probably 100%, yeah. right? And, and it doesn't surprise me in some yeah. ways. Uh, some people think it's a surprising thing, but it doesn't sur surprise me because much of the work happens on the endpoints. Right. It's your weakest link in the chain. And if you look at some of the biggest attack techniques like credential thefts or phishing, it, ha it all starts by tricking somebody who is on an endpoint, yep. right? So, so having these mechanisms in place is super important. Okay, and so, but you were talking about firmware attacks. Do you yeah. have any data on that? So 44% had faced an attack, and then is a large percentage of those sort of firmware attacks, or was that 44%? It's leveraging firmware. any kind of vulnerability on the device, which often happens to be BIOS, firmware level yeah, okay. kind of attack. Yeah. Ah, okay, so yeah. that was sort of related to that number. Yeah. What does a customer have to do to take advantage of sort of hardware-assisted security? Are there prerequisites, or do they just, you guys take care of all that, or what would you advise customers? Yeah, short answer, we take care of all of that. Uh, so we have, uh, we don't distinguish, like we have a commercial suite of devices, Optiplex, Latitudes and Precisions, and we don't say a particular series gets the best security and some others don't. For us, security is essential for everybody. So we build these capabilities uniformly on all of our commercial devices, uh, that any, any new, of course, we are building new capabilities and adding to that list all the time but any current shipping Dell commercial device pretty much carries uh, most of these capabilities with it. And then like I said, we also have the ability to offer, uh, so, and all of them of course have the option to buy with the Vipro uh, ch chipset. Yeah. And then uh, with any of those machines, we have the ability to work and add the CrowdStrike license on top of that for our customers. Yeah. Rick, you talked about the threat landscape. You know, it's, it's growing constantly. Here we are in Las Vegas. Two big attacks just happened that hit the news. How can hardware assistance security help customers to start reining in that attack surface that just seems to be just going like this? Yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, there's, there's a lot that we can do, but this is where uh, companies need to understand it is a team sport, yeah. and it's going to take 
uh, silicon, it's going to take great systems design, it's going to take partnerships with companies like CrowdStrike to be able to really help pull it all together. So, you know, one of the things that I really like about these types of collaborations is we're, we have a lot of ideas, but we're learning a lot from the people, companies like CrowdStrike who are on the front line. What really do you need in terms of visibility, transparency, capabilities? The same thing with Dell. I remember years ago when Dell started doing the BIOS work, I happened to be responsible for that vPro business, and we started doing collaborations to get that visibility and expose it to companies like CrowdStrike who can capitalize it. And I think one of the best things about this three-way collaboration is how much work we've done already on the integration side. You literally are buying a, a Dell system with vPro capabilities and you're a CrowdStrike customer. You go to that console, it's really a couple of buttons that yeah. you turn on and the capabilities are there. So this is part of the zero trust mosaic. But if zero trust comes time, sometimes it's kind of opaque, you know? And the other thing is it's, practitioners will say, oh that's good, but it's hard to operationalize or I can operationalize a piece of it. You guys are operationalizing a piece of the zero trust mosaic. So bring it back to zero trust and how it fits into the puzzle. Absolutely, right? So uh, the first step in, uh, you know, in cybersecurity is visibility, right? So like again, we are, by doing the work we're doing, we are providing visibility to areas that never had visibility to before, right? So the fundamental premise of zero trust is what? Um, uh, trust, but always verify. Now, how will you verify a machine has the right BIOS and it's not been tampered with? How will you verify that the supply chain was clean and nobody tampered or inserted a malicious component or inserted a malware into a hardware component, whatever it is, right? How would you verify that the machine is booted to the most secure state? That's the foundation, and I call that a foundation is a building block of zero trust. You have to have that. So when, when customers buy into a hardware ecosystem, a PC ecosystem, or a server and storage ecosystem, they have to inherently buy it into that foundation. If you have the state of art identity protection, network protection solutions at the top, but have a gaping hole and gaps in hardware that you don't even have visibility to, there is no zero trust. Right? So for us, building that foundation across hardware ecosystems, working with partners like Intel is, is, is the essential, right? Then on top of that, we also think about what we call as a control plane ecosystem, where we talk about three control planes. We talk about identity control plane, uh, threat management control plane, and policy management control plane. A very simple example could be, let's say if this is all implemented in an environment, and customer, you know, a user boots a machine, for whatever reason, a firmware is compromised. Today, up until few years ago, that was not visible. It was telly, nobody knew. Now people know it, but then that telemetry flows into a threat management control plane, which says, okay, I have one more actor variable to consider. Mm -hmm. I've seen a threat coming from a compromised firmware. Now I need to do an action, right? I need to either isolate the host or whatever it is. That's where the policy management comes in and says, okay, my policy states that in such and such instance, I'm going to either isolate the host or I'm going to do some forensics on it, whatever automation rules, you can do that. You can also have an identity play a role and says, okay, the first step I'm going to do even before policy kicks in is, I'm going to re-verify the user. Step up authentication. Can you verify who you say you are? Right, so by working these control planes in conjunction with everything we build together is really how we bring to bear the full benefit of zero trust. Wow, but that's fascinating. Can I just summarize? Sure. I know we got a break, but I'm hearing four things. You're narrowing the attack surface, you're improving my threat detection, you're part of the zero trust puzzle piece, and I'm leveraging my investment in CrowdStrike. Mm -hmm. yep. yes. Is the sort of fourth piece of that. Exactly. Is that the right sort of framework to think yep. about the business case here? You yes, got it. that's yeah. the right way to look at it. And you know, this is a, it, this is going to be an ongoing collaboration. Threats will continue to evolve. So will we evolve in the way we address them. Cool. So great collaboration, looking great forward stuff, to guys. it. Great stuff guys, we'll have to have you back. So I think we're just like literally just scratching the surface of what you guys are doing in hardware assisted security. Why it's so important, how organizations can take advantage of it and really the, the dynamics and the power that these three partners are bringing together for customers. We really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. Thanks Thank guys, you. it was great. Thank you. Thank All you. right, for our guests and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE's day two coverage of CrowdStrike, Falcon 23. We're going to be back after a lunch break, so we'll see you soon. <laughs>